for today's purposes, we're going to be demoing a, a wood a wood fence post installation. Okay, if you were doing metal posts, okay, um, you would be using Schedule 40 um, galvanized posts. Um, they're very expensive. The metal posts will last kind of indefinitely a, a long time but they're extremely expensive but that galvanized schedule 40 2 and 7 8 inch post is going to last you forever you know ultimately we installed all wooden posts treated wooden posts they've lasted about any depending upon different different um posts i've gotten over the years have been treated differently um for a long time they were bringing in like creosote treated posts those those lasted the longest um, but over time, we've been replacing our wood posts with, our me with metal on our, our home farm. But we also get about 200 inches of rain a year, so our posts don't last as long. In drier areas, your wood posts, they'll, they'll last pretty long. And also the wood post installation, you can go a little faster because you're not going to be pouring concrete. So with the metal posts, you do need to pour cement. And also with the metal posts, obviously, you're not going to be using any staples. And um, so you got to wrap all your fencing, which is a little more time consuming and labor intensive than, than putting staples in. Digging a fence post hole, what I like to do is, is not make it any bigger than I have to, but thinking about like when I put my post in, that I have enough room to get the tamping side of my bar all around it. So my general rule of thumb is, is to shoot for about, um, about 24 inches. So we're at, we're pretty much at 24 inches here. So when I'm backfilling, you're gonna do like four to six inches at a time and then just tamp. And then this is where our, our uh, torpedo level comes in handy. Okay. So like, you know, everyone knows um, between the bubbles is level. An H brace is like your common, you know, pulling point. Now we have our, our now we're gonna put our H in, right? This fence in particular says it's, I think 47 inches. So, you know, 47 inches. So 47 inches is here. This is the top of our fence, right? Which means our barbed wire, our top strand barbed wire is gonna usually be like, about three inches above that. The way I like to do it is I like to kind of put my, my H or my cross piece right around the top of where that fence is gonna be. I, I would, if I, again, if I was with my, my helper, my, one, of my, one of my boys, you know, we just lift it up, we'd make a mark on it of, of our H and then cut it with a chainsaw. I always like cut it like a little bit proud so that I can wedge it in there. Okay, so then we're gonna um, we're gonna install this. Yeah. You hold that side, someone. You got that side. Right on. And then um, again, you can like get into your leveling. Okay, so now we're, uh, we're going to put our H brace in. So um, our fence is being stretched this way, in this direction. So this is going to be our corner. So that means we're going to want our 45 with our bracing wire um, from this point to this point. So that when the fence wants to pull this way, this is um, being pulled back to the low spot. 
okay? The, it's stronger down here. Is you can just put a staple in up here. And don't put it all the way in. It's just like a guide right now, yeah? It's just kind of holding your wire. And then same down here. And it looks pretty ugly, but you'll see that it'll, it'll work out. Okay. And again, I'm not gonna make it super, uh, I'm not like finishing my stapling off right now because I wanna, I wanna take out some slack. The more slack I can take out now, the easier it's gonna be. Um, okay, then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna finish off my staple on this side. So now that's snug. I'm not really worried about that one right now. I can cut these ends off. And I'm gonna just um, wrap my little tails. So now you have this here, you can take your hammer. Now you're gonna start tightening it. So now, um, we have our H-brace in. Again, you guys are all imagining this is a five to six inch wood fence post treated here and here. And then this is like the four inch, just a little smaller size, okay? And then you cut it, you tacked it in, just kind of hanging out there. And then once you put this in, kind of all sealed up, okay? Now, um, as mentioned, <clears throat> we're gonna do the other side more, um, a little more rootsy. Imagine we're walking down like hundreds of feet. What do you call this style? This style? Uh, we, I'd call this one like, um, maybe like a 45 corner. Cause ultimately we're just making like a 45 on this here. Okay. So, um, the way I like to put these 45s in like this, I kind of just, um, I found like one full step, about a yard is about a good distance. So I'm gonna put this post in and I'm not gonna necessarily uh, try to drive it in at its full angle. I'm gonna bend it once it's in there. How do you know yeah, where, where uh, general, no go, I, we always say like, go to the Batman shield is hidden. Okay. Perfect, that's good, cool. Okay, so now, um, now we're gonna bring it to the post. So usually what I do is I'm just gonna bend it. I usually go both sides. And then if you do it right, if you do it right, you keep, your, keep these on the outside and then this T, you'll be able to tack it on there. So um, if you guys come close, but um, you can tack it on. And then we're gonna put bracing wire here, but I don't want it to bounce back, so usually I'll just take a take one of my nails. Oh, so then it's stable, okay. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna uh, now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come around here. I'm gonna secure it with my bracing wire. So usually I'll just like take a rough measurement and get my wire out of the way. There's some um, different ways that I've done this, but I like to actually make um, 
make one wrap. So same thing, I'm gonna, I have it set there. I'm gonna take my staple. Made a little tight on that side. You don't need the tail so long. So we can just cut this. Cut that one a little short. And then um, now same thing. Except this time I'll demo with the linemen. So there you have your options of your strong corners, right? And then same thing, if this was a corner, we could just put another 45 like this and another unit, and then we have a corner, okay? So the next step is we're gonna run our, we're gonna run our bottom strand barbed wire, okay? Yeah, we're gonna run two. And we're gonna use that bottom strand as our line for putting in our T-posts, okay? So here's our barbed wire. We'll run one one way and one another. All right, so um, whenever you're starting your line, you're gonna get one side attached, right? So, and remember, what gauge is this wire? This is 14 gauge wire. What gauge would you want it to be? 12 and a half. Okay. So you're going to come around your post. You're going to make a wrap. You're going to put this guy in. We're going to tack a staple in. But I'm not going to sink it because it's probably going to come out. Um, now, we're gonna stretch this one way. I'm gonna show you guys and then we'll, we'll stretch uh, the second one um, with the come along. So one of the cool things about these H braces is that you can actually use one, si you can use one side of it um, as your pulley um, to stretch off of and then you can tack one side. So you grab the, uh, Grab the back of the, the um, in a minute, you grab the barb with the back of the hammer, you use your lever. Go ahead. So, um, so there you have your first, your first line. You can wrap around. It's always hard working that low strand of barbed wire because you're really right on the earth, you know. Okay. So that's your that's your low strand, and once you're, um, it's also going to serve as how we're going to put our T posts in, right? It's going to serve as our line. So now. Um, because we're keeping out wild pigs, we want to roll, um, we're going to run two strands of barbed wire, right? So this one is really going to be like right on the ground, ultimately, right? And then our next one, I usually put a couple inches higher. So this one, we're going to run the other direction and we're going to stretch it with the come along. So um, setting this, uh, this next strand, we have a good example because um, there's two pieces here. We're just going to go, um, same thing, I like to just, you can use your staple to set it. You come, oh. 
coming about two inches higher or so. Maybe that's a little, little high. We're gonna put our we, our barbed wire short, or you ran out of wire, and now you're putting in a new spool, right? How do I how do I connect them? Barbed wire is actually a lot easier to connect than your um than connecting field fence. There we go. Okay. All right. So the barbed wire is pretty simple for um for making a splice. What I like to do is um just make a, uh, a simple bend in it. Doesn't need to be much. And then bring it around, simple bend. Again, it, it, the nice thing about it being 14 gauge is that it's a little more easy to work with than the 12 gauge. So you do one side, again, if you're just by yourself, then you do the other. If you're with a helper, one of your kids, you could do it together. Okay. So that's it. So with, the, um, with that double hammer method, you're never necessarily gonna get it as tight as we're gonna get it with the come along. So now you need something to pull off of, right? Because, um, so a truck, a car, a tree, tractor, whatever you got. Um, and then, I don't know, you guys can practice your knots however you see fit. I recommend a bowling. Oh yeah, chain is great. Yep, chain works. Okay, so now, sadly, we are uh, we just have a little bit of wire here. And um, so what I do is uh, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna make a couple wraps. Around my uh, come along. Okay, so that's the other way. And again, this line, um, as you guys can see, it's not exactly where we want it, but it's, we can move it. Okay. So that's a common thing. You know, sometimes I like to try to get whatever tool I'm, I'm attaching to somewhat in the line. Um, I like to have it a little bit on the outside of the fence because I can always push to the fence rather than if it's, if, if what I'm pulling against, like, let's say, what I was pulling on was like the, the ulu tree. Now I'm going to be like pulling these barb these barbs are going to hit the post each time because they'll be too close. It's easier, easier to push it in. We can go a little tighter. And there's like that fine line of like um, knowing that when it's when you push it down, it's going to like tension too based on where it's at. So I like to come down and feel it. I'm like that's feeling pretty good. We can go a little tighter. One more. There we go. Okay. Yeah. And then when you're putting your, um, I like to, whenever I'm putting a staple in on the barbed wire, I like to put it whichever, when you release, right, the wire's gonna wanna go one direction. So put your staple in on the direction where it's gonna catch the barb. Okay, and then you can release the come along. So then you have this little tail, same thing. You're gonna bring that tail around. So now what do we do next? T-posts, yes. So now you're gonna set your T-posts uh, you got your line in, kind of two birds with one stone. Um, put that staple in later, even though you don't have to. So this is where, um, like I'm a big fan, like I just know what my distance is. I just usually go one, two, three, and a little step. 
One, two, three, and a little step. And then they're marked. Here you go. So what, I just wanna, when you're putting these in, you know, one thing is like you wanna get it, um, oftentimes when you're putting your post in, especially if you're around where I live, it, it won't go in straight because there's plenty rock, yeah? Just roll with that and straighten it after you put it in. But what's important is that you set it at your line, okay? That's the important part. If you set it back here, you're never gonna get it right, okay? So set it at that barbed wire and then drive it in. Perfect. All right. So once you do this a lot, you start to, you know, Mr. Miyagi, like two strikes with the hammer to get the nail in, it starts to be a fun game. Like how many few hits you can do it. But um, yeah, and then on the rocky stuff, you almost have to go through the rock sometimes. You pound, you, you know, it's not going, not going, and then you can like break a rock. Um, so again, like I'm just gonna pull out the level to tell you, you really probably shouldn't use the level for this purpose, okay? But just like as you're learning, like what's level and what's not, yeah, you could bring the level out, but um, otherwise you're kind of just eyeballing it like the Christmas tree. If you put up a Christmas tree, you know, you're kind of just gonna go, all right, how's that look? You look at it from two directions. Okay, we're good. Also, just to note, you guys, um, make sure make sure you put them the right way you know you make sure you put the nubs out like how you how you say you're going to do them right fence is out here the fence is going to be going here the pigs aren't going to are going to push this way okay the livestock is going to push this way okay so make sure your nubs out so again imagine we're, we can go 100 feet like this right we're going to go 100 feet at at you know put those t-posts in every eight to ten feet depending upon your terrain your budget don't go over ten so uh, now, um, what's next? Now we got our field fence. Okay, so does everyone see how this is graduated wire? Okay, this is really important that you buy the graduated wire. This wire is still gonna let baby piglets in. So now um, you're gonna bring your fence up No, there's no inside or outside, correct. Um, so there's a bottom and a top though, that's for sure. There's a bottom and a top. So um, what I'm gonna point out, you guys, over here when we start, what I like to do is um, make sure before you put your staple in, your first staple, it kind of determines like where it's gonna be. So um, what I like to do is try to find a line you know, that I'm gonna follow and keep it even. I'm gonna give myself plenty of room here, especially in this case with you guys, um, to wrap this, and I'll show you that in a minute. I find like my vertical stay, and I get my height right. So I really want this fence, I like to have it like on the ground, you know? You really just want it on the ground, which is where your bottom wire is. So in this case, I'm gonna start at the top, and also the fence is gonna be pulling that way, so I want my, my staple on the, on the pulling side of my, of my wrapped vertical stay, okay? So I want it there. So now I got my top one set. Now usually I'm gonna come down and see how I put that top one right here in the middle. Now I have a line to follow. If I, if I start doing weird stuff like this, the fence, when I pull it, it's gonna, it's gonna kink and skew at a certain spot because I didn't make it straight, okay? And it's already, you can see where, like, in the manufacturing, we have this little bit of a weird spot here, but we can, we can almost straighten that out. You see that, where it's flexible? So I can follow my line down of those stays, all right? So then I'll, I'll maybe do, sometimes when I wanted to get it to stay, I'll, I'll put my staple in around um, both sides so it doesn't want to pull back. 
Okay. And don't be shy to sink those staples. And then I do every one. One thing to note um, is that all this field fence, the bottom wire is going to be 10 gauge. Top wi wire is going to be 10 gauge. These middle wires are the 12 gauge. And then once you got your line set, you know, then you're kind of just pounding them in. You will see it if, if you don't actually set, if you don't actually put staples at every one, what will happen is when you stretch it, that one will, you know, it'll pull a little bit, you know. So I was trying to save these guys a little bit with the claw. But... Okay, so now we're going to go down. We got our stretcher. So now what we got to do is got to lift up the fence and we got to bring it over. So yeah, you can gra grab, just grab that corner and we'll lift together. Right? And we're going to kind of lift and pull the bottom this way, same time. There we go. Just drop it. Yeah. So like in this scenario, um, like I'm looking at this fence, if we were like making a turn here, we could stretch this, staple this, and then we could just keep unrolling. If this was the end of our line, what I'll do so I don't have to like work around this while I'm stretching is I'm just gonna cut the fence here so I have enough to pull around. So I'm gonna do that right now just so I'm not working around this big roll since we're pushing such a, <clears throat> such a short fence. So um, what I'm gonna do is just kind of like eyeball, um, taking it around this post and it's not much, again, we're taking it out. Generally, when I cut fence, I always cut it right in the middle so I have, so I have a tail to work with always on both sides, okay? Don't cut it right against your stay. Just cut it right in the middle. And this is where those guys come in handy, um, oh, yeah. where it's just really, yeah, you can hold that. It's just really nice to use these guys. So I use, um, you want to get right in the middle of your stay, of your, you want to be right in the middle, that's important. You also want to make sure, um, you want to make sure you're right on the bottom. I like to like, I like to leave about, you know, about a half inch from the, the bottom wire to my, um, to the bottom of my two by four. And I'm going to put that in. And all it is is a little half inch bolt, about four inches long. I like to use a wing nut, no, no washer. I like to just use a wing nut on there. And I usually don't over tighten it yet. Make sure you get the top one in and now you can snug it up. And you want them to be like, you know, snug. Like good hand tight. Like it's pinching, it's gonna pinch that so there's your homemade contrivance fencing clamp and now we'll get back to uh, let me get this other rope ultimately we're like just gonna equalize the pulling. So. All right. Uh, 
Now let's see here. It's kind of short. Do the fun part. Do come along. Sometimes when you're doing this, like if you get like don't want to use the come along, you can just reverse your truck or tractor. Just don't go too far. So that's that's uh, that's about it. And then I like to, you know, take a feel of it. You know, see how tight. I like to. Um, sometimes, like, you'll come around the fence, and you might see some. If you're like me and you're uh, using old fence, sometimes you gotta like take out a kink or open something up. It's always pleasant working with new fence. Um, and then just kind of keep feeling it for what kind of tension you want. And if it feels good, make it tighter. And I like to look at like, you're gonna know the quality of your, of your H brace or whatever you're pulling on, coming back over here and taking a look at it. Like, how's it, now you got all this force coming on here, right? And in this scenario, it's not pushing at all on this yet. Not until we staple. So everything's getting pushed on here. And I'll take a look at it, and it's got a lot of pressure on it, and it's, it's not moving. So again, this example of like, we did this fast, this doesn't matter so much. It's going this way. Now, like if we were waiting on it and putting water in, like I was saying, you know, we'd want it all solid, but for the purposes of our three hour demo, we're good. So it feels pretty good. So we're gonna make it tighter. Yeah, when you start to hear that. So then you're, um, now you can attach it. So with your attaching, you're just gonna lean on it. Now same thing with your staple, you're gonna go back, the fence is gonna be, it's gonna wanna push back this way, so now I'm putting my staple on this side. I like to, um, I always like to clip before I actually take my come along off, just so that it's like, I'm fully secured, you know? Um, you can, in theory, take that come along off now and everything is legit, but you actually, I'm sorry, no you don't, because you wanna, you definitely wanna attach this guy, right? Because ultimately, you want a lot of the pressure on this post and relieved from this one. So I'm just gonna put a couple staples in this guy because we're pretty good. And this is like another example, like see where my barbed wire is? I can, put a, I can put a staple in over that barbed wire. Again, same thing, we have a double staple there. Clip tricks. There's th three different little tools you can use for your clips. Um, the one is out of your hog wire or your um, your uh, hog panel. You can cut a little clip piece. Your other is your 16D nail. And sometimes I like to use a Tico for my lower wires because I don't have much room. Okay, so I'll show you guys here how we clip. I'm gonna get right down there. It's nice usually to start on the bottom because that's kind of going to kind of set everything. You know, if you start on the top, you're like, oh, it's so nice to be standing up. And then you're like, you just start doing that. And then all of a sudden you look down and you're three inches off the soil. So come on down here. In this case, I'm going to, um, what I like to do is 
what I like to do is I like to get this secondary barbed wire, it's gonna be in the middle of that stay, okay, of the two, the two horizontal stays. So I'm gonna go down, a lot of times at home, I don't even like clipping this bottom wire anymore um, because eventually the soil kind of grows in there and it, it's just a, it's a real hassle to clip it. But, um, but in, for you guys, when we're talking pig fencing, um, we're gonna clip it. So I'm gonna put this barbed wire. Again, you can, it's kind of your call if you want that barbed wire to be clipped or not. I'm gonna take my little teak go. I like to, um, you get that clip on there set and then you can take your channel, your um, lineman's and you can tighten it. And then sometimes once you get it around, I like to put that bottom one on there real good. Okay, and then you got your second barb. Um, these clips are, there's a real way to use them and a way not to. So you guys can see there's like an open end, okay? The open end is what you're gonna wanna um, put on first and then you're gonna wrap it around the T-post like so. And then that's where you're gonna come in with your tool. I'm gonna do the top and you're gonna bring it around, okay? Um, it's kind of a preference. The nail's nice because you can drop it in, it doesn't fall out. But again, the nail can get a little cumbersome in its own sense. Once you have it on like that, it's really, what I like to do is do them all, and then I take my linemen's, I like to pinch that open side, because I have seen that open side um, snap off, especially when a horse comes right here and puts its butt, and it starts going like this when it wants to scratch. I hate it. And it loosens your fence. Um, so now, we're down here. We're gonna do this second strand of barbed wire. And this is an important one because you're kind of you're kind of getting a, 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 a another horizontal stay here, okay? And this is part of the reason why you don't want to do it before you put up your fence or before you put up your hog wire because you want to see it perfectly, okay? I'm gonna take my my nail. It's only gonna go around so much. Take my linemen's. Pinch, pinch. I usually go, I usually put a top clip, skip the, skip the second one, and I put a clip. And then I usually will skip, um, again, it depends on your livestock um, in particular. Then I'll, I usually skip one, put one, skip one, put one. And then in my situation, like where I've kind of dealt with a lot of our pigs and you know, my, I don't really have pig issues anymore. I, I'm good, that's it, that's all I'll clip. If I have at uh, like our, at our Eli site at Go Farm um, where we have a lot of pig issues, then I'll put another, uh, I'll definitely do some extra clipping down here. So I'll clip, I'll clip this guy. And then if I'm really feeling, if I'm really feeling like, uh, a frisky situation or like crazy pig pressure, I'll put a clip on this this one as well, you know? Mm -hmm. So like you're real, um, and again, like like uncle here has been saying, like, you know, those pigs are smart. Those pigs are a nuisance. You spend all this time, effort and money. If it's really all about pigs, clip every one of them down there. Don't, don't, don't skimp on it. There's no reason not to put in a 10 cent clip and make sure to come back with your linemen and pinch them okay because they will pop it'll it will happen they'll pop so just give them that little pinch and if you want to tighten them more if you feel like oh i want to make it tighter 
just pull that around more. If you want to make it tighter, once you get it around, pull it more. You know, now that bugger's really on there. Uh, the next step, we'd be clipping this the rest of the way. Um, and then we come over here. And then uh, imagine we clip that. And then we're going to take our come along off. Take off your fancy homemade clamp. So I believe those metal clamps that they sell at the fencing stores, I believe they're like almost $150 now. So this costs a 10 foot two by four. I don't know, what's that run these days? 12 bucks or something? Yeah, and then a couple Ace Hardware bolts. You know, it's like, you know, 15 bucks and a couple holes. And it'll last forever too. You could paint it if you want. Um, so then uh, this next little part here, you know, now imagine you're just gonna clean this up and bring this around, right? And there's different ways to do that. Like, um, you know, if you wanted to cut these verticals, if you wanted to cut this off, I like to leave a little bit of length in case I ever need to come back, especially like I need to replace a wood post or something, you know, you whack it with your tractor, you damage something, I don't know, the termites eat it. Then you can come back, you can pop your staples, you can put a post in the same spot, and now you have something to pull from. You don't have to, you don't have to splice a new piece of fence in. Okay, so then I'll just bring this over. That saves you a lot of time. You can come in. Okay. Again, you don't need to like go crazy. Like a couple turns, it's okay. Like you, again, you're setting it up like this in case you have to come back later. And every turn you make, you're adding a potential like, like rust and weak point to it. You know, those turns are adding like on the long haul in 15 years, this is what's gonna rust before this does. Those turns, it's like water's gonna sit there, moisture's gonna sit there. It's the little things that you see over the long period of time. Um, so yeah, you do that all the way down. You know, here, I'm not gonna do it, but you would, you would just kinda cut these stays out so you could go around that or not. You know, you could just come right over this, right? You can just come right over it like that and leave it. And again, you don't need to attach that. It's okay, it's fine. And you just go all the way down. Your next step would be your top strand of barbed wire. Now, if you're only doing pigs, you know, and you're like, hey, I don't have any livestock in there for now. I don't need to do a top strand. You don't need to do a top strand. You can always come back later and do a top strand. If you're gonna do your top strand, you're gonna do it just like you did the bottom strand, right? You can either do the two hammer, two person way, or you could do pull it. Um, oftentimes with the pulling that top strand, it's nice to have, you know, something with some height to pull off of, right? If you're, if you're pulling with a come along, um, or that's where it comes in handy with the two hammers, right? Because you can just pull at that, that top point. Um, and then, like I said, don't put, don't try to get, like, if you're trying to keep livestock in, don't think, oh, I'm just going to make my fence taller and put my barbed wire up here. As you do that, the horse and the cow, they're going to stick their head right through it. They're going to scratch the back of their neck while they eat over here and push your fence down. So don't do that. Keep it about, you know, shoot for about like uh, two and a half to three inches maximum. Okay.